Next thing I want to talk about is the Druid architecture. Um, I know some of you would have already used Druid and well into your deployment phase. Just want to spend some time here what Druid components are. So at the, at the base of a Druid has three server types, the query server, the data server, and the master server. Um, the query server are the endpoints that users and the client applications interact with. So if you have your own application or a users, they want to run a query against Druid, they would be talking to the query server. Um, the query server runs what we call the Druid broker and the router process inside it. Um, and we also have a component called Pivot, and the Pivot is a visualization tool that imply built on top of Druid. It tightly integrates with Druid and gives you really drag and drop ad hoc analytics on, uh, on, on Druid. And then, that's a, and then we have a data server. The data server stores and ingests data. <clears throat> the data server runs two critical components, the Druid historical nodes, that's used for storage and processing of large amounts of immutable data and the druid middle managers they are responsible for ingesting and processing the data um the real time data uh, that rob talked up talked about is 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 ingested and managed via the druid uh, middle managers and then you have the master servers the master servers um coordinate the data ingestion and storage in the druid cluster um, it is not involved in queries. Um, it is responsible for starting new ingestion jobs, telling the Druid uh, middle manager to start a new ingestion jobs, and handling failovers of Druid historical nodes. There are two critical components here of uh, Druid components, Druid coordinator and Druid overlord. Um, on top of that, we also use Zookeeper for cluster coordination, um, and there's an external dependency, which I will be talking in, in a minute. <clears throat> for uh, storing metadata and also what we call as a deep storage.